It came and it went. If you blinked, you might have missed it. I actually did miss it. I was skiing out in New Mexico in the afternoon on a Saturday and I didn't want to go to a TV at one o'clock mountain time. So I pushed it off into the evening and watched it then up against a really good NFL game between the Packers and the 49ers. But there I was watching the hilariously dubbed Camp Cupcake. I don't know who came up with that term, but it was chef's kiss. Brilliant. It really is what it is. It's also part of a campaign to pluck away at uh, this most pointless game in international football, according to many. It is not the most pointless game in international football, but it's probably closer to the bottom than the top. I can, I, can, I can confirm that. It's also part of a campaign where I know people are meaning well and trying to chip away at the, the way things U.S. soccer does things. And this is part of it. It is this game that pops up to uh, accommodate Major League Soccer, which is out of season, and get some guys uh, a run with the national team. So if I, <laughs> we all have been hearing about this game before it arrived, the USA-Slovenia game to be played in San Antonio. Don't watch it. It's pointless. Uh, it is a stupid game. Don't watch it. And then everybody watched it and then overanalyzed it. I saw it. You know, people, I go on Twitter and I could see Greg Berhalter trending. And I'm like, oh boy. And look, Greg Berhalter should be held accountable when it matters, right? This doesn't matter. March when the Nations League comes around, July when the Copa America comes around, then we can put him under the microscope. And I guarantee you we will. We will. If he falls on his face, we're going to get 2026 right. I don't know if he loses his job, but there's the time where we can get out the sharp knives. Today on The Soccer OG, check out The Soccer OG podcast. Well, podcasts are available. I am joined by Pulas Dar, Indian soccer broadcaster. We'll talk about the Sleeping giant of Indian football, playing at the Asian Cup, the national team, the Indian Super League. Real interesting topic. Check out the Asian Cup. It's been really compelling. Like and subscribe us here on YouTube under my name, Max Bretos. We'll break down everything from Camp Cupcake. And yes, we shouldn't have watched it. It doesn't matter. Um, but people who were saying not to watch it, then I see them telling me that they're watching it a second time to break down these games. And I, I understand it. But... If you were to ask me, is it pointless? And I, I'd probably say yes. I like this game on the calendar. I, I tune in. It's what I do. It's what you do. That's why you're watching this program right now. So I like it. And I, I enjoy seeing some players getting this opportunity that may be on the fringe. And we'll get to maybe capping too many players in a moment. But I'll tell you this. If tomorrow they say January camp is done, I would not lose a wink of sleep. And I would not miss this game in any way, shape, or form. It is pretty pointless. But it's there. It's, it's only there for us. It's, it's distinctly ours. So let's, we, we clearly want to talk about it. But if we didn't want to talk about it, I'm fine with that too. I, in fact, was not going to do a video for the January camp. But this discussion about how are we viewing it as a pointless game, let it stay in the dark, which U.S. soccer doesn't heavily promote. They played it in a 7,000-seat stadium, giving it some love to a USL site. I didn't mind that part of it either. So they're not making a big deal of it. So we said we weren't going to make a big deal of it, but we made a big deal of it. Maybe we should make a big deal of it. I think there's enough meat on this bone to do just that, and I'll get into those uh, details. Again, Greg Berhalter will be judged in March and we can move forward. But, you know, I was these emails, people saying, Greg Berhalter, ugly game. we got to win this game. Why do we have to win this game? It, was it ugly? Yeah. I mean, look, Greg Berhalter doesn't, it's not a uh, proponent of uh, Jogo Benito or sexy football. I get it. But it's about getting the results, which he did prior to this at the World Cup and the Nations League and the Gold Cup. But now he's got to do it here. And that is when we can look at it. So, I mean, it's not a time to do it. People are up in arms about the result. The U.S. were better than Slovenia. Games like this happen all the time. They fell behind and they pushed hard. Probably should have got a goal or did it. And they did it. Who cares? But, you know, some tweets out there. there this, I just, we've got to, this fits this narrative here. I mean, but this is because the bozos, the media will likely not provide proper context 
This was basically a Slovenia CD trialist team full of uncapped players from the Slovenian league. Yeah, they were poor, but who, who, I, I, I guess I'm an MLS bozo, but <laughs> I, mean, I don't know who's protecting this, this matchup. It was a CD team for the U.S. too, so let's be fair. And just it would continue. I mean, I, I can't even read this. GG, Triple G is a blank coach. January is a blank camp. MLS is a blank league. MLS propagandists posing as journos are pathetic excuses for human beings. They lack any form of integrity. This is crazy, people. <laughs> this is crazy. No one's protecting this. It's a stinker. You guys really seem to care, and that's fine. Don't tell everyone not to care, though, because we're breaking it down here. And there are reasons, obviously, where this sh you shouldn't care too much. Let's, let's look at two big parts of this. And I agree with it. Look, Benny said it should have been an under 23 preparatory for the Olympics, which is six months away. So I don't think you're getting, the, you're really getting complete value for an Olympic squad here in January. The average age was about 24. It still was an Olympic eligible team with a couple players there that were over the age limit. And I will tell you a few of them. I'm glad we're there. And I'll tell you why in a moment. So it was close enough. It was all right. And by the way, if it should become an under 23 or under 20, shh, that'd be, I'm okay with that. But it kind of was that. Okay. But it's also with games in March. If you have an inkling that you could get your team better for March here, and we'll find out later, then you do that. That's the important one. Not the Olympics. The Olympics, by the way, is the camp cupcake of international tournaments in 2024. All right. It's nice for the players. It's a good experience. We have no proof that it's going to benefit our program uh, other than that. Maybe it's like courses. No one really cares. I don't, when the Copa America and the Euros is going on, I promise you. The other thing that was being said is we're capping too many players. Again, I can agree with that. I, I tend to err on the side that I like to see more players capped. And I think we're, we're happy some of these guys got in there. Maybe not a dozen. Does it muddy the waters if we have too many players in the camps? Maybe. I, 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 I don't think I'd win an argument if I started it with you, but I, I don't think it compromises the criteria for the first team. The cream will rise to the top. In important games, our A team or our B team will be there ready to go. So that's the way I look at it. Um, the, the group of players that were brought in and obviously this team looked better in the second half when some of those younger players got a sniff that was worth the squeeze right we were happy about seeing Esmir Bayraktarovic he looks like a keeper technically gifted kid from Wisconsin who was courageous and made good play after good play Diego Luna going almost the whole game playing out wide which he does for his club but ducking inside as well and looking better and better all the time that's important Jack McGlynn Loved it. Caleb Wiley coming in, super athlete, worth the squeeze to get him into a January camp. Um, I think it's important to look beyond that for some of the overage players. And let me explain. Miles Robinson, and don't roll your eyes because the only criticism that you will come up with it is that he signed an MLS. Maybe he played it safe. He went for the money. I'm not going to criticize him there. You can open that up if you would like. Our center back situation is not great. So I want to see what Miles Robinson could do. And you can see what he could do. He's a great athlete and he can hit a ball across the field, which he did pretty effectively a couple times in that second half. Right now, our center back situation, not ideal. Tim Ream is certainly starting to show the wear and tear. I think he'll be okay in 2024, but we can't rely on him really after this year. He's just too old. Chris Richards, who I think most of us agree is the number one center back on the national team. I just saw him this weekend where Arsenal targeted him and every time they did, they scored a goal. He has not had a great run. Yes, he's playing Arsenal, but it looks pretty delicate. And I don't know if I can just chalk him in there as our number one center back. Austin Trusty playing well, but not really as a center back. Cameron Carter Vickers could be the number one guy, but he plays in the SPL, which is not better than MLS. And he's not been healthy either. Mark McKenzie, perhaps. But is, the, what I'm saying is nobody has really locked it in like we have with our wingers and our midfielders. 
and even we know our top two strikers. Center back is mysterious right now. So Miles Robinson, I want to see him get some minutes. Dewan Jones, I want to see him get some minutes. Super athlete, played well. We know it's going to be Serginho Dest and Anthony Robinson, probably Joe Scally in there. And then Dewan Jones has a legit chance to make a squad. I know that's two MLS players, but they certainly have a sniff. And as guys over the age of 23, I'm glad they got a run in this game. That was important. Center back's an issue. Goalkeeper's an issue. Matt Turner's playing in Nottingham Forest, but not playing great. He's still our number one, without question. Other guys, Zach Steffen's back in MLS. Ethan Horvath, we're waiting and seeing. Gaga Slonina's playing in Belgium, but playing for a team, I think, in second from the bottom, but still okay. Is he a number one? I don't know. Why not look at Patrick Schulte? Superb season with Major League Soccer. Did okay. Why not give him a look? Or Drake Callender. So these players, and Schulte, I believe, is, is 22, so he would fit the Olympic profile. I'm okay with that. So I think there's some key positions there that we thrust some guys in there, and to me, made sense. Uh, the young players. We talked about uh, Bayrak Terevich. Um, heard his name butchered a lot on both English and Spanish. Uh, we mentioned the Wiley McGlynn. What about Bernard Camungo? What about Aiden Morris? I'm glad Camungo. He looked, he looked like he has something. Oh, I got to sneeze. <laughs> so, good enough. Timothy Tillman, overage player, played well. I wanted to see him. <coughs> I hope I could mute that out. I tell you, I was out skiing. It was a little heavy. So, was this game pointless? Yeah, probably. Do we need to have it on the calendar? Probably not. Did I enjoy watching it? No. It was hard. It was hard. Do you guys have a point? Sure. But don't watch it and don't make a big stink of it. And now we did and now I made a video, so so be it. But uh, we will see how it all comes out in the wash. But the good news is it's behind us and March 21st against Jamaica in the Nations League, June in the Copa America. That's next. Let's get excited and let's get critical because I think it certainly deserves it. The Soccer OG. Check out the Soccer OG podcast. Well, podcasts are available. Like and subscribe us here. We'll be back this week with some great USMNT content uh, coming out a couple times this week and a new pod as well later this week as well. Talk to you soon.